The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. And good morning here at 5 a.m. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. Your time now is 5.03. Bakersfield Fire Chief Anthony Galagaza yesterday announced his retirement after 30 years in the department. The fire department says Galagaza started out as a firefighter in 1990 and has been climbing the ranks and serving his community ever since. He spent the last three and a half years as chief of the department. His retirement is effective December 3rd. City Manager Christian Clegg will appoint the next fire chief. The department says recruitment is now open for qualified internal candidates. When people call 911, they expect a composed voice on the other end of the line and professionals who know how to handle emergencies. And that's a lot to ask, and yet many of us take it for granted. That's why yesterday's special observance of First Responders Day might have felt overdue. Here's 17's Robert Price. Today at Union Cemetery, it was the inaugural First Responders Day. About 100 people were here. But if just a fraction of the tens of thousands of Kern County residents who call upon first responders every year had attended the ceremony, this place would have been overrun. These days, it seems like there's a national day of recognition for every profession, every pursuit, every anniversary. And yet, somehow, we're just getting around to honoring people who save lives in our community every single day. First responders. Oh, Bakersfield made some amends for that long running oversight Thursday when about 100 people gathered at Union Cemetery to salute the men and women who answer the call literally when someone is experiencing an emergency. 911 calls don't get busy signals. We honor our fallen as well as those who continue to serve on this day. And the trauma, the tragedy, the lack of closure can really weigh on first responders. For every gratifying, life-saving call, there's a heartbreaker. This is Bakersfield Fire Chief Anthony Galagaza. I've always said that every firefighter has a cup. And over time, that cup gets more full and more full, and sometimes those cups can overflow. And that comes, but there also is the other side, the gratification of being able to actually be there at that time when they needed you most and being able to make a bad situation better. There are 4.6 million first responders in this country, according to the Department of Homeland Security, firefighters, police, emergency medical technicians, including paramedics, and 911 operators and dozens die in the line of duty every year, according to the CDC. On average, 97 firefighters and 155 police officers. It's been an especially tough 18 months for them, too, with the COVID-19 pandemic complicating things. With ongoing increases in population, the toxicity of street drugs, and distrust for authority, it might get worse before it gets better. All the more reason to respect their sacrifices. The next time you make a 911 call, you probably won't have time to say it. But when you're out and about and you see a first responder, take a minute and say thank you. At Union Cemetery, Robert Price, 17 News. In national news this morning, Bakersfield Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is taking aim at President Biden's social spending and climate action bill, and it's continually changing stipulations. This is no longer a Congress where the best ideas compete. They're now competing for a vote based upon when Air Force One lands in Rome. McCarthy says Democrats in Congress are not keeping the best interest of the American people in mind as they work to trim down the bill. McCarthy says despite recent cuts, passage of the Build Back Better bill will lead to increased costs for Americans and spur inflation. McCarthy also takes issue with the infrastructure bill, bill's provision to hire 87,000 IRS agents and what he claims is a plan to let the IRS spy on the majority of Americans. In a roundtable discussion yesterday, McCarthy said the infrastructure bill includes a provision for credit unions, banks and other financial institutions to report to the IRS deposits and withdrawals that reach or exceed $10,000 a year. Democrats argue the change is meant to help reduce tax fraud and underreporting by wealthy Americans, while Republicans and many financial institutions say it raises concern over privacy protections. 
17 News is your local election headquarters, and just a little more than a week into his campaign, Lewis Gill, the former CEO of the Bakersfield Homeless Center, has hit a major fundraising goal in his quest to oust House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy from Congress. Gill announced last week he was running on the Democratic ticket in the 23rd Congressional District race. He says he has raised more than $100,000 so far for his campaign, although the finances have not yet been published by the Federal Election Commission. In comparison, McCarthy has raised more than $9 million for his campaign. And we're recapping our top stories this Friday morning. Bakersfield Fire Chief Anthony Galagaza yesterday announced his retirement after 30 years in the department. His retirement is effective December 3rd. City Manager Christian Clegg will appoint the next fire chief. The department says recruitment is now open. Over 100 people gathered at Union Cemetery yesterday to commemorate First Responders Recognition Day. Yesterday's ceremony was all about showing appreciation for law enforcement, firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, medical personnel, and all those who risk their lives to save others. Bakersfield Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is taking aim at President Biden's spending bill. He says Democrats in Congress are not keeping the best interests of the American people in mind as they work to trim down what's inside. McCarthy says despite recent cuts, passage of the bill will lead to increased costs for Americans. Now to some breaking news from overnight, and a man is in the hospital this morning after a possible drive-by shooting last night in Oildale. Deputies say they were called to the area of Lincoln Avenue for a report of a shooting just after 10 o'clock. A man was found with at least one gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital, but there is no word on his condition this morning. KCSO says no arrests have been made. In your 17 Crime Watch now, a man taken into custody at a homeless encampment near Plans Park is suspected in the killings of two women in separate incidents. 34-year-old Adrian Angel Chavez was arrested Wednesday on suspicion of two counts of murder in the deaths of a woman whose body was found in October of last year and another whose body was found in July of this year. The body of 28-year-old Marilyn Cuervo was discovered this morning, or discovered rather the morning of October 12th, 2020, by a code enforcement officer on Daniels Lane. The second woman, whose identity has not been released, was found dead at the Desert Star Motel on South Union Avenue. Chavez, held without bail, is due in court today. Now an update on a devastating crash we reported on yesterday on 17 News at Sunrise. Friends and family yesterday identified the victim as 26-year-old as a 26-year-old Bakersfield woman. 17's Christian Galeno has the latest. Close to 24 hours later, shattered glass, debris, and skid marks remain at the site where a three-vehicle crash claimed the life of a young woman. Friends and loved ones showed up throughout the day at a makeshift memorial. They identified the woman as 26-year-old Victoria Tori Arviso. Bakersfield police say she was a passenger in the wrecked sedan. Speed is a factor in this collision. But again, as far as determining fault, we have a long way to go. We still have a lot of investigating to do to, to, before we come to that conclusion. Another passenger in that sedan was severely injured. Passengers in the two pickups, including children, suffered minor to moderate injuries but survived. Bakersfield police believes alcohol was a factor in the crash, but who was under the influence of alcohol while behind the wheel has yet to be determined. According to the Highway Patrol, they've responded to 14 DUI fatalities in the Bakersfield area this year. A spokesperson for the family said that they are not ready to publicly speak about the loss of Tori, but messages left at the memorial illustrate the loss that this has brought on friends, loved ones, and her family. Get there. You're going to get there. Um, obviously, you can see it's dark outside, especially for the pedestrians. The car is going to win every time. Make sure you're using crosswalks, marked or unmarked crosswalks, and even then, run across the street. Don't be looking at your phone while you cross the street. Have your head on a swivel. 17's Christian Galeno reporting. This comes as the CHP launched a new campaign to reduce the number of crashes caused by impaired drivers. The Impaired Driving Reduction Education and Enforcement Campaign began at the start of this month and lasts through the end of September next year. The campaign includes additional patrols, DUI checkpoints, and traffic safety education efforts throughout the state. CHP says in 2019, impaired driving crashes were responsible for nearly 600 deaths and more than 11,000 injuries here in California. A local funeral home is paying tribute to a fallen Marine from Riverside County who was killed in the attacks in Afghanistan in August. Corporal Hunter Lopez was one of 13 U.S. service members 
killed in those attacks. Today, Basham Funeral Home is raising money in support of his family. The funeral service is happening at 11 at Basham Funeral Care Chapel on Niles. If you can't attend but would like to donate, you can visit KGET.com for a link. Just click on the hot link icon. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.